Okay, hi everyone. Today I want to talk about all we need is love and how the lack of it creates most of our struggles. So welcome back to another episode of Rapid Subconscious Reprogramming Community. Thank you for being here. If you're watching live, hashtag live on Facebook. If you're watching replay, hashtag replay so that we know you're around. Remember that the more you engage with this, if you're liking it, of course, the more people are going to see it. This Facebook algorithm works like that. The more people send me some love, type some comments on Facebook, on social media, more people are going to get to see this. So I would really appreciate as I'm doing this for free, you know, going live every week. I would love to have some help from you guys to help me get more eyes on this things that I'm doing. So again, thank you very much again for being here. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, let's get going. So let me change over here. There you go. Whoops. I don't know what happened there. Sorry. Well, the video just moved away. Here we go. Sorry. Perfect. So here we're back. So thank you very much. Let's talk about this topic today. All we need is love and how the lack of it is creating most of our struggles. So when we're kids, we need to understand that we come to this world, right? Pure love, pure intentions. We have very little predefined things in our mind. We are discovering what love is, what our self image is, what money is, what is, you know, uh, being a partner, being a man, being a woman, what that entails. We come to this world without knowing most of those things, right? And through our environment, we start learning. So one of the things is that as kids, we don't know how to give ourselves love, acceptance. So we're looking for that in our environment. The problem is that many times our environment, our parents, with their own resolve issues, are not capable of giving us the love and acceptance that we need in every moment. They, you know, I'll talk to a lot of people that tell me, oh, but Tommy, I had a good childhood. Yeah, but I didn't behave much. So every now and then I got a spanking. That could be enough to create this sense of not worthiness, of not feeling loved, not feeling accepted. Because if I didn't behave like my parents expected me, of course, I received this punishment, screaming, whatever, maybe mom and dad fighting, uh, maybe mom and dad went through a divorce. So a lot of people think that they might have received the love and acceptance that they needed as kids, but now they don't understand as grown-ups why they are eating too much, they are procrastinating, falling into perfectionism, not feeling happy, feeling depressed, feeling anxiety, and so many other things. I'm not going to keep naming because, you know, whatever you're struggling with, in most cases, not to say all, but nearly all, but let's put it as in most cases, it had to do with a lack of love. Because if we feel loved, we don't need to be looking over our shoulders to see when the next attack is going to come, when somebody's going to hurt us, when somebody's going to scream at us. But when we're kids and we were exposed to an environment where parents may be, you know, your dad, your mom, both of them, you know, were screaming, we start learning that we need to be in a sense of the, bo the body learns this, that it needs to be in alert mode to, of course, prevent the next attack. So it could be maybe behaving, maybe uh, not speaking up, maybe not questioning anything, just doing what you were told to do. So you become this, you know, people pleasing or other people become the rebellious because although rebellious kids still, you know, are punished, the punishment could still be a way of receiving some kind of attention, some kind of love, even if it's negative love, they could still feel that way, right? So I heard cases of kids that used to break their toys as a way to get mom's and dad's attention. So although breaking toys was frowned upon, parents would get angry with the kid, actually the kid was looking for attention. So when we start understanding how the mind works and it starts creating behaviors to try to get from the outside what was lacking during childhood as a kid, right? Or as a kid looking to receive that as a kid, we are able to start understanding and seeing our behaviors in a much more loving way. And as you can see here to the upper right, people, I would like you to invite you to look there. I have my new logo, the mind engineer, that is the mind that is connected with the heart because although 
a lot of people that know me that I talk about love, unconditional love, the logo didn't represent that exactly. So I was looking for some time how to improve that. And finally, a guy reached out to me, said that he was willing to help me with the logo. And I told him my idea and he just put that together. It was so basic. And it was like, whoa, at least I loved it. I hope you guys like it too, because it's a connection between mind and heart. They don't work separately. They, they shouldn't be in a war, right? The idea is to connect them. Hey, Vipin, thank you very much for stopping by. Love you. I'm going to leave you a message about your coaching. Okay, Vipin, I'm going to check it back because I maybe I, I missed that message. Thank you very much. So again, it's connecting mind and heart, right? It's not a war in the mind. It's not the ego, you know, that is trying to screw me up, trying to get in the way, trying to, you know, make things worse. The ego is trying to protect us. So when we're able to understand the mind and connect it with love through emotion intelligence, that's when we're able to start making changes in our life. It could be overcoming depression, overcoming anxiety, overcoming the beating up that we do to ourselves or whatever it is that we're doing. Because I said at the beginning of this, you know, monologue, this you know, presentation I'm doing, all we need is love. Because if we're lacking love, we're going to create these behaviors. That look, it could be what I call, you know, healthy addictions, going to the gym, having the perfect body, because if I have the perfect body, I'm going to be loved and accepted. And a lot of people are not going to accept that as a truth. But I'm going to tell you that normally most of the people out there that are seeking the perfect body, seeking the perfect partner, seeking, making a lot of money, whatever it is externally, normally, in most cases, they're stuffing, they're covering up something that is happening inside of them. That it could be, again, the lack of love and acceptance towards themselves. And this is one of the main things that I work on. A person that is eating too much, it could be that they're stuffing their emotions or, you know, looking for love through food. Because if we go back to breastfeeding when we were babies, right, food with food came love. Maybe growing up, our, my mom cooked for me and that made me feel loved. So now I have associated maybe, and I'm not saying this is for everyone, the idea is to each person dig, explore their mind to see what's going on. I could use food to feel loved or to numb the pain of the lack of love. So we go back to needing love to feel happy, to feel content, to feel joy and things like that. So the idea is to be able to work on identifying what is it that I'm creating these behaviors, eating, going to the gym. And when I don't go, I beat myself up or beating myself up or drugs or procrastination or whatever it is, perfectionism. Hey, Ringo, thank you for stopping by. So whatever I'm doing, it has to do normally from a lack of love. So if I'm able to connect those things, understand them and be able to start giving myself what I needed in the first place, love and acceptance in different ways, that is going to allow me to start being able to overcome the struggles that I have. Because again, if I'm not, if I'm procrastinating, not doing my taxes, I'm screwing myself up. So normally most people wait to the last moment, March, April, whenever it is that you need to do your personal taxes or your um, business taxes, they wait to the last moment. They need that deadline because look at this. And I say all the time, we work with what I call the dance of fears. Hey, Bridget, thank you very much for stopping by. What is the dance of fears? And this is what most coaching is based up. And a lot of gurus out there are using this, right? Is the fear of doing and the fear of not doing. So they're in a way competing. Look at this. If my fear of doing is higher of doing my taxes and realizing I have to pay a lot of money to the government and I'm so scared of that, the fear of doing is higher than the fear of not doing. So I'm not going to do it. The fear of doing a you no know, uh, essay for or a project for college, for whatever, for my boss, right? The fear of doing is bigger, right? I can do it wrong. I can fail, whatever. Many times the fear of a doing is greater, so I'm not going to do it. So until I'm getting closer to the deadline, the fear of not doing, because if I don't do it, I can get fired from work. I can get a failure at, at, at college if I, or university if I don't do it. The fear of not doing starts becoming bigger and bigger. It overrides the fear of doing, the fear of not doing. So now I do it. 
Does this make sense, the dance of fears? And I talked about this in the past, but I wanna connect it. Because if you hear what I'm saying is the fear of doing or the fear of not doing, type a yes in the chat if that is making sense, what I just explained about the dance of fear, please. Let's interact a little bit, people. And remember, the more you engage in this, if you're watching on social media, the more people are gonna get to see it, the more people are gonna benefit from this. And that's why I'm doing this free community, right? So let me know in the chat. There we go. We're getting some yeses on Zoom. So the fear of doing, the fear of not doing. Where is love in that equation? Where is love in that occasion? Is love here? What I'm just saying, fear of doing or fear of not doing. Am I talking about love? Say yes or no in the chat. If I spoke about love when I talked about the fear of doing or fear of not doing. No. There is a lack of love in either way. Fear of doing or fear of not doing is not including love. And that is a big problem because when love is not included in the equation, that's when we end up with more pain inside, emotional pain, right? Because there's a disconnect, there's a separation inside of us. And the idea is to connect mind and heart, emotional intelligence, to be able to do the things that we need to do, but not feeling drained, not feeling exhausted when we end up doing them. So how many times were you able to do stuff that you needed to do, that maybe you waited to the last moment to do it, and when you did it, you ended up exhausted? Type uh, one in the chat, if you have done things that you needed to do, and you ended up exhausted after doing it. That happens to a lot of people because they have to push themselves to do things that they don't want to do. But look, if I have a broken leg, will I want to go run a marathon? Would I like to go walk if I have a broken leg? Of course not. I would rather do some, you know, sit back, you know, wait for it to get well to then maybe run a race. But if right? I have a broken leg. I go out and run the marathon. I'm going to make it even worse. So what I'm trying to show you here, people, when the mind is telling you not to do something, there is a deeper reason that it doesn't want to do it. So if I push harder out of fear, and that's what a lot of gurus out there do, make you picture the worst case scenario if you don't do what you need to do. And some, not a lot, but some people are able to still do what they need to do that creates more inner pain, more emotional damage. And although we don't see it because it, you cannot see it, like measure it easily, it, it, it doesn't mean that it's not happening. So what I'm trying to invite you here, people, again, as I the new logo shows, sorry, this way, <laughs> the new logo shows up here, right, is connecting the mind with the heart, being able to love myself even when I'm not doing what I'm doing and trying to understand why I'm not doing what I'm doing, why I'm people pleasing, why I'm falling into procrastination, perfectionism, why I'm feeling anxiety, why I'm feeling stressed out. I work with a lot of people that they might have things going on on the outside that seem good. You know, um, maybe a, pe a person that has a great family, that has a good living. Uh, I have worked with some millionaires, right? And deep down, they still feel like crap. They still feel scared. They feel they struggle with anxiety. They struggle with depression. And they beat themselves up saying, oh, I shouldn't feel like this because look at all these great things on the outside. Yes, a lot of people that have great things on the outside still struggle on the inside, but normally they don't go out there and say this. But if we look at big actors, Ben Affleck, I love Ben Affleck as an actor, although he might, you might say, oh, but he has some, you know, characters that I don't like much. Okay, that's fine, whatever. But I really like Ben Affleck in general. But if you look at his life, he has struggled with alcoholism for a long time, and that destroyed his marriage with his first uh, wife that was in that case, I don't remember her name now, but it was a really well-known, you know, actress, beautiful woman. So they had the money, they had all the external things, kids. Why did he destroy his life back then? Right? Because deep down, Jennifer Garner, thank you very much. He was married with Jennifer Garner and destroyed the marriage through the 
addiction that he had. So he had the money, he had the woman, like the, 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 the wife, right? He had the kids, he had money, he had success, he had everything, quote unquote, that he wanted to, but he still felt like crap inside. And this happens to a lot of people that I work with, people that don't have things on the outside, people that have things on the outside, but deep down they feel like crap. And people that tell me, you know, well, Tommy, if I have the money, if I find, you know, the perfect wife or the perfect husband, I'm going to be happy. No. No, because deep down, you're lacking love on the inside, internally, from you to you. So you don't love yourself, and that's why you're struggling. And nothing externally, no money, no wife or husband or kids or anything is going to fill that gap. So it's important to recognize these things because a lot of people are out there looking for things on the outside and they're struggling when they're not happening or when they're happening, they're still struggling because deep, deep, deep down, they're not being able to love themselves truly. So imagine that I feel like crap because I'm not making as much money as I would like to. How can I still love myself through that? How am I feeling deeper down as I'm not making enough money. I feel anger. I feel the shame. I feel disappointment. Whatever it is, I feel, you know, sad. Why do I feel all of this? Maybe I feel that I'm a failure because I'm not being able to make more money. I'm a failure because, you know, I still feel uh, a loser, although I'm making all these things externally. I, as again, as I talk, as I work with several people that had everything on the outside, deep down, they still felt like a loser, they still felt like a failure, they still felt not good enough, they still felt not worthy. So how can we recognize these things and start loving and accepting ourselves? Because that's the only way, seriously. All we need is love. From there, it makes it easier to find the job that I want, to find a partner that is more aligned with me, to um, enjoy more my life, to take more actions, whatever it is, but it comes from love. Yes, Bridget, all it goes back to self-love. That's why I changed my logo a little bit more that it represents more the work that I've been doing for the last 15 years. A lot of people were telling me, but Tommy, your logo looks more like the mind. And the other day I was talking to a woman, the woman's like, yeah, Tommy, I love everything that has to do with the mind, but I want to focus more on, you know, the the right side that, that what she was saying, right? The right side that is more focused into, you know, the, the intuition, emotions and things like that, right? And I said, it's like connecting the mind and the heart. And I've been trying to find somehow to represent that through a logo finally i was able to do it and yes it has to do with that hey there we go we have the person that <laughs> just commented and i think it deleted the person that did the logo just um uh, came up and said something but i don't know it's not showing so okay the idea is to work towards loving every part of us even the ones that we don't like that doesn't mean that they're going to stay like that. Thank you, Jose. I love, I'm glad that you like it. Love the heart. So, yeah, I'm changing that. Connecting mind on heart. Loving the parts of me. Why don't I like the part of me that is procrastinating? There's a reason why a part of me is, not, is procrastinating. Explore that with mind and heart connected. Explore your behaviors with a loving mind open mind, loving mind, that's going to help you reveal the deeper reason that you're struggling with whatever you're struggling. And it's going to allow you to start making changes. So if you hate that you're procrastinating, you're going to create more procrastination. If you hate that you're people pleasing, you're going to create more of that. If you hate a part of you, normally, you're going to create more of it. So if you truly want to change something, I'm going to give you an example very soon, right? You need to love the part of you, not the action. And it's not about loving procrastination. It's about loving the part of you that is procrastinating. Why? Because look at this. If my kid, right, is doing something wrong and I yell at him and I tell him to stop doing that because if he doesn't stop doing that, he's going to lose his privilege to blah, whatever. If I threaten him, he might change it. But from fear, what if I can help my kid change a behavior through love? What would you rather do? Help somebody change through fear 
or through love? Right, type it in the chat. Love or fear? Love or fear? What would you like to help somebody change from love or from fear? Type it in the chat, please. I know it's a very basic, stupid question, but it's important, right? Love, love coming in Zoom, and there's a little bit of delay on, on social media. Love, thank you, Jose. So we need to learn how to love the part of us that is doing what it's doing, understanding it. That's why we're connecting mind and heart. Understand why it's doing. What is the benefit? Yesterday, I was talking to a guy over social media that he told me that he beat himself up, you know, even make himself bleed beating himself in the face, right? Because that way he was able to face any guy out there and, you know, receive a beating and be able to overcome it easier. So when I asked him if he had received a beating as a kid, he said, yes. So I told him, right, my interpretation, I could be wrong, but a fast interpretation is that when I received a beating as a kid, I didn't feel loved and accepted. I start feeling not love and accepted. If I beat myself up, in a way, it is helping me not feel the pain of the lack of love and acceptance. Listen to this, how the mind plays games. As I don't feel love and accepted, I need to beat myself up because it's going to stop in a way, quote unquote, that's what the mind thinks. It's wrong. But as a kid, right, when my mom, you know, maybe... You know, this this kid that um, this guy that I'm talking to, mom beat him up, right? He made it, it made him feel not loved and accepted. So now when he punches himself, in a way, the pain, physical pain that he experiences disconnects him from the pain of feeling not love and accepted. Although he's feeling not love and accepted again as he is rejecting himself, the physical pain was overriding the emotional pain. So in a way, he was doing that to disconnect from the pain that he was going through. So you would say, it sounds crazy. Think about basic things that the mind could do to stop the emotional pain. Drinking, smoking, drugs is a way to stop the emotional pain. The problem is that the mind doesn't stop it. And this is what we need to understand. The mind doesn't stop the pain. It just sends it to the background. So it's still bothering us, but we're not really aware of it. So we got to be very careful with this. Does this make sense? Type a one in the chat if it's making sense what I'm saying. Behaviors many times is seeking for love and acceptance or numbing the pain of the lack of love and acceptance. And I've seen several cases of people that would inflict pain in themselves because that would take their mind off the emotional pain. Seriously, a person would cut themselves because by cutting themselves, now they had to focus on healing that, on stopping the bleeding, disinfecting, covering it up. So it was their way to stop the emotional pain by dealing with their physical pain. It sounds crazy or weird. It's not. When you start understanding the mind and you have this loving way of looking at things, that's why the connection between mind and love and heart, it makes it much easier to understand. So if I'm procrastinating, there's a reason behind it. People pleasing, there's a reason behind it. You know, one have the perfect figure and I don't. if I don't have it, I beat myself up. It has to do with something deeper. Anything that we're doing normally, normally comes from seeking for love and acceptance or numbing the lack of love and acceptance. So we need to bring this word love to more conversations. Be more open to understanding from a loving perspective how the mind works because it's going to allow you to start making changes and reduce your struggles. If you're struggling in life, it has to do from a lack of love. So if you're able to start understanding that, you might say, but, oh, I miss my family, lack of love. I would like to make more money, 
maybe you have associated that making more money is going to make you feel loved and accepted because that's what your parents taught you that you should make. Look at this. You should make a lot of money in your life. Right. And that could have been, oh, if I make a lot of money, my mom, my mom and dad are going to be proud of me. So that is still love. Everything is connected to love at the end of the day. Being a good speaker, making money, having a good wife, husband, having kids. It all goes back to feeling love and acceptance, having the right body, losing the weight, having less wrinkles, you know, having less gray hair, whatever it is that you're looking for at the end is to feel love and accepted. And if you want to dye your hair, dye your hair, it's fine. But if you do it from a place of lack of love and acceptance, you're just covering the problem. You're not dealing with a deeper problem. Again, one more time. Is this making sense? Type a two, two in the chat if this is making sense. So we need to deal more with this love that I'm talking about. So Bridget, Victoria, thank you for stopping by. Josefina, Jose, thank you. Asan, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Asan, for the logo. It's amazing. I appreciate that. Uh, who else stopped by? We got ah, Pradeep. Thank you very much, Ringo. Vipin, thank you all of you for your support, for being here. Share this if you can. Type, uh, click on the share button afterwards when this is done. Share in your profile if you don't mind. Let more people know about this because then using fear to make changes is because there's a lack of love. If there's love, I should be able to do the things that I need to do from love. If I use fear, I'm disconnecting from love. I'm not connecting mind and heart. There's a disconnect. And that disconnect creates inner pain. And although I might not see it, is going to affect me in a negative way. So again, thank you very much to all of you for watching this. I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to stay here now on Zoom. I'm going to go for Q&A and stay a little bit longer. So thank you for watching on social media. Really appreciate it. Share, engage, comment. That will be great so more people get to see this. So have a great rest of the week. And again, connecting mind and heart is the key to change and to be able to feel success, feel free, feel everything that you're looking on the eyes. So people say, you know, financial freedom, that's BS. There's no financial freedom from the outside. The freedom comes from within. I've worked with millionaires that don't feel free. Do you see? Doesn't matter how much money they make, they still don't feel free because it freedom Everything comes from within. So again, thank you very much again. Hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any questions, also post them down there on social media and I'll try to get back to you guys. Again, thank you very much. Sending love to all of you. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.